Welcome back. South Africa has woken up to another wave of attacks and looting of foreign-owned businesses overnight in central Johannesburg. But meanwhile, the Minister of Finance, Sito Mboweni, has expressed concern over the series of attacks on foreign-owned businesses in some cities around the country. He was addressed in the media in Johannesburg on Monday during a press conference on the preparations for the World Economic Forum on Africa. The experience uh, around the world is that countries which are uh, receptive to uh, immigrants uh, tend to be more dynamic um, in their economic activities, cultural diversity, and better understanding of human beings. Um, I mean, you, you see it in the, in the United States, the, uh, the role of uh, people from Latin America who come to the U.S., uh, some from Africa, from Nigeria, working, for example, in some of the high-tech environments. Um, so there's sufficient evidence to say that uh, uh, narrow nationalism is not a good catalyst for economic development. But openness is. Uh, so it doesn't help, for example, for a president of a country, not this one, somewhere to say, shut down all the Nigerian shops, uh, which one of them did recently. Or another one says that there's too many um, uh, uh, people from um, um, Togo or something like that, shut down their shops to say that in these following categories of businesses, no uh, non-national is allowed. You can't do that kind of thing. It's not helpful at all. So I think we in South Africa have a duty to educate our people to, uh, you know, by the way, at the end of the day, we're all Africans. So whether I, leave, I can decide to live anywhere in Africa. And I don't think that's why we need this a free movement of people in Africa, these African passports that can make us travel anywhere we want. Anyway, maybe most Nigerians want to be in South Africa here anyway. So why bother? Um, um, all the Basutu want to be in South Africa here. I'm sure all South Africans who want to be in Basutu are there already. So why this? For example, I don't understand why we still have a border post between Maseru and Lady Brad, to be honest, but I think I'll get into trouble again for them. <laughs> I'm used to getting into trouble these days. <laughs> Seems to be my daily bread. Uh, so I think openness is key, and, and as Elsie says, during the course of this meeting in Cape Town, there'll be many uh, heads of states from uh, Africa, many uh, political and diplomatic leaders from other parts of the world, business people from around the world. Um, and so there will be many opportunities to discuss and debate uh, some, of, some of these issues. Well, let's return home now to get updates from the Nigerian equities market with Temple Ashaju. Temple, it's the first training day of the month and the new week. Give us a sense of how the market is performing at the moment. Market is in green again. I mean, we're up some 0.12%, even though we had risen way higher than that, so some 0.32% levels earlier. Uh, that's talking about the key benchmark indices. Uh, but we're still looking good, still in the green territory at this point, uh, given the buy sentiment we're seeing in the market today. We're seeing a lot of investors really upbeat at this point on uh, a lot of stocks uh, in the market, uh, given the uh, lows and uh, prices that we've seen on the banking stocks uh, at Friday. Uh, lots of investors have come in to mop up what we've seen, uh, the, the losses around uh, the likes of Zenith Bank, UBA, uh, investors are taking position, Access Bank, we've seen traction around that as well. Uh, but more importantly, uh, we're, we're seeing CCNN really, really uh, blazing the trade right now in the market. It's up by some nine points. Uh, 17 percent, so we're close to 10 percent in the market. Uh, that's about the topmost gain uh, so far in the markets today. Uh, we even see some investors also uh, taking advantage of the low pricing that we've seen on uh, Nigerian breweries in recent time. Uh, put all of this together, it translates to gains 
as we see in the key benchmark indices. On the other side of things, we got uh, Dangote Cement, profits taking on Dangote Cement. Uh, some speculators came in and swoop up the, uh, the, the, the profit that they've seen around that uh, number. Recall that this is a, uh, a company that was trading around 164, 65, 67 Naira uh, for the greater part of last week. Uh, so they came in and uh, pulled out those uh, uh, gains now to their own uh, favor. So that's the sense. We have MTN, I should also add, has also contributed to the uh, decline that we saw uh, in the uh, key benchmark indices because, again, there was uh, some kind of profit taking on this particular counter a few hours ago when the market opened. So that was how, that was, these were the two key losses that actually reduced uh, the gains that we've seen in the indices all the way from 0.32% to 0.12% uh, as we have right now. Uh, but given the uh, circumstance we're seeing in the market, the positive sentiments of investors and the market breaks at this point, we're likely to close on the green territory, close northwards today, BC. Right, thanks, Temple. Women in the Central African Republic have enrolled in a farm project that's meant to foster peace among communities and help beneficiaries run profitable businesses. The project is driven by the United Nations peacekeepers who are pushing women in Birao to grow crops with the aim of bringing communities together in the midst of a conflict which began since 2013 when the former president, Francois Bouzizi, was ousted. The Farming for Peace project was started by the United Nations Multidimensional Integrated Stabilization Mission in the Central Africa Republic. Participants who are enrolled on the program come from various women groups. They are trained on improved farm methods and financial management skills. We are very happy with MINUSCA. They teach us good farm practices. We also work with people from various ethnic communities and we learn how to live and work together. We want peace. The women sell their produce, which includes vegetables and crops like cassava, at Biara's open-air market once a week. Minuska's famine initiatives also targets the youth. The perpetrators of violence always run to the youth. Uh, if they are not engaged uh, in a positive manner. So having sat down with the field office, we thought it wise that uh, the, the people that you should embrace for now are the youth to the extent that uh, once we keep them busy, they should, uh, they should not easily be manipulated. And at the same time, we realize that uh, jobs are not there here. Uh, we thought that uh, such projects should be able to uh, engage the youth in productive ways that should be able to keep them busy. According to new figures from the United Nations, Central African Republic may be getting safer due to a sharp drop in the number of attacks and human rights abuses since last year. The relative respite has been linked to a peace deal between the government and 14 armed groups in February. That's today's show. Thank you for watching. I am BC Adebayo.